Um, this is Mid City Neighborhood Organization's first virtual meeting. Welcome to June. I hope everything has been going well for everyone. Everyone's safe and hunkered in place uh, and glad that this storm was uh, not much of an event for us this year. So, um, it's a nice way to put everybody in the right mindset for the focus of most of this meeting, which is storm season preparedness um, and its effects under the current COVID situation. Um, but after, but we'll get to that with uh, Lauren Mellon from Nola Ready. Um, but first, uh, we had some organizational announcements and things to get through. Um, first of all, uh, different news and whatnot. As far as MCNO, um, we've been pretty active still. Board has been meeting monthly. Our uh, block captains have also been meeting uh, their regular uh, meeting schedule, which is one week after our general meetings. Um, so if you're interested in joining those uh, those groups or wanting to attend or wanting more information, please check uh, mcno.org slash events for our schedule. We post most everything there. I'm, we're doing better. I'm doing better at updating the website. And so um, if you could use that as your source of our official information and rescheduling and whatnot um, as well. So. Uh, so we're trying to plan for the future. We know this is not going to last forever. Uh, we're eventually going to be moving out of phase one soon. Um, but we need to think about maybe what MCNO needs to do going forward. And some of our regular events may need to be changed. So um, we're kind of asking if people have ideas for a fall event to please get in touch with us. Uh, info at mcno.org. Um, I don't think we usually have our porch crawl event, which we crawl through different homes and uh, mostly on, outside on people's porches and ask for donations from bars and restaurants. Um, I think most everyone feels like this might, this is definitely going to be a different fall for events um, and completely reimagine um, not having to rely on our bars and restaurants to elicit donations, but try and prop them up um, and give them support from the community. So they've been, bars and restaurants have really driven this event as well as our uh, our neighbors for uh, making their houses open for this event, but we definitely need to rethink what that might be. So please, if you have any input and you're interested in uh, planning events or fundraising with MCML, please get in touch with us. Uh, also on that theme, we are currently planning for Katrina Service Day. Um, Stephen, I don't know if you, if the city does this or sets a date for this. I know it's sort of a citywide effort, but this will be the 15th anniversary of Katrina. And so um, we're open to partnering with other organizations to identify those service plans and those beautification projects that we usually do that last week of August. and. Um, so if you are also interested, please get in touch and want, interested in volunteering or to help plan uh, info at mcnote.org. Uh, a couple other things. Um, I don't know if you've seen the news. I don't have a link to the article here. I think it was just possibly published today. Um, there is a petition or there was a petition that started to rename Jefferson Davis Parkway, Norman Francis Parkway, um, and which is I think it's gotten over 7,000 signatures so far. Um, I can't multitask, but if somebody wants to put the link to the to the uh, to the petition in the chat, that would be great. Um, but the actual steps for moving forward with this, um, and since it's being sponsored by both uh, the mayor's office and um, and council members, Helena Moreno and Jason Williams would have to go to city planning commission. Um, and so their requests would have to be seen by city planning and take public input at that time. So um, the survey, I mean, the petition is fantastic. And I think it's definitely started the ball rolling on this a few years ago, uh, even though it's just now being picked up again as an issue. Um, city planning commission is going to be your 
destination for actual public input once it is on the agenda and has an item number. So as soon as that gets to City Planning Commission, and uh, we will prioritize that and inform membership of that um, item. Uh, also moving forward, um, thank you, Jordan. Uh, cocktail for the cause. Uh, Rouse in the Park uh, typically always does a month long uh, fundraiser for different organizations around New Orleans. And our cocktail, unfortunately, was cut short by the month of March. Uh, and so they've restarted the cocktail for us for the month of June. Um, if you're not aware, they have reopened their dining room, obviously limited uh, seating bandwidth, but they are open, I believe, Thursday through Sunday uh, dining room, and then they're doing takeout for other days of the week. Um, if you haven't seen it, the here's, the link was in the newsletter and then also the details for that. Um, so please enjoy the uh, City Park Lemonade, a bourbon-based cocktail with proceeds benefiting uh, Mid-City Neighborhood Organization. Um, also planning, uh, we met this week with uh, Urban Conservancy um, to discuss a long project that it was a pet project of a, a former board member, but we've started to secure funding through a couple of different sources through MCNO and in the Tuba area for, for um, the removal of excessive concrete at the corner of Uloa and uh, South Scott. So Urban Conservancy is partnering with us as part of their pavement reduction and pavement removal program to help us um, to work in that identified intersection um, that we've uh, had applied to the cleanup NOLA program, grant program, and we're awarded 1500 towards that effort. So we may be needing to raise more funds to complete this project based on how much of that intersection we can do and probably phase this thing into, into multiple steps um, based on cost and based on effort required. Um, you know, we started this effort, I believe, two years ago. Uh, some of the businesses have changed hands since that time, and so getting other people and other property owners at that intersection to sign on is going to be part of that process as well. So, um, but we started that ball rolling because uh, the Cleanup NOLA grant had to be completed or at least uh, spent by October originally, but those deadlines have now been pushed into the future. Um, but we still need to identify that as some work to do moving forward. Um, like I said, block captain meetings are going on as, as regular. If you're interested in becoming a block captain, please uh, reach out. It's just a more intensive way that uh, members are, are serving the community and trying to give us more of a uh, information gathering and uh, service type approach to the organization. And then also we will be going through an internal equity audit workshop uh, on the 13th. Um, I'm not sure if anybody else has been on these calls, but uh, Broadmoor Improvement Association and Evacuteer have been doing uh, monthly calls through this COVID response, uh, really community building, resource sharing, and, um, and a lot of that information was talking about long-term strategies for equitable and fair approach to uh, to food security and medical response. So as part of this was also suggested um, to have uh, an audit of operations of an organization. And so um, we're gonna be holding that on the 13th. If you're interested in sitting at the table for that audit workshop, please, uh, please reach out at info at mcno.org. All right. Um, other things I wanted to touch on real quick. Um, if you're not aware, uh, you know, the, the rescheduled election date for the presidential primary is July 11th. Uh, I have links in the newsletter on how to register to vote. The application for an absentee ballot is an actual PDF that needs to be sent, filled out and sent back to the Secretary of State. So if you are 
at risk, which they've expanded, you know, the the conditions to absentee valid by, by mail, please go ahead and um, fill out that application. The, I don't know if there is a deadline for that particularly, but I do know that the deadline for turning in your mail-in ballots is about three or four days before election day. So I imagine this whole process is gonna take some time if you need to, if you qualify or if you wanna be you vote by mail, please see uh, this link on the Secretary of State's website and complete that PDF. Um, if you're if you're not aware, it's not just the the presidential primary. It's also the um, it's the special election for first city court, uh, which handles evictions and small claims, uh, and then also Democratic parish executive committee and state central committee. Um, those numbers will all be available, and I believe we had. Uh, a lot of those, anyone who wanted to present and talked about this at our last uh, in-person general meeting back in March. So, um, so that's all the announcements that I had. Most all other information relative links uh, about MCNO are, are in this newsletter at the top in the chat. Um, we have revamped our membership page. Uh, so please, uh, if you want to become a member, if you aren't already, uh, please use that new member page. It brings back a subscriber feature that we had missed since we moved to the new website. It also sends out automatic alerts and renewal notifications. So, um, and then also we also uh, our flag and merchandise site that's now open, that's now posted where you can do um, purchase all of our merchandise on mcno.org. Um, so, but that's not an automated process. It may be easy on the front end, but all of that stuff is being hand delivered by board members <laughs> across the neighborhood. So uh, I appreciate help on that. Um, all right. Well, uh, any other questions about MCNO in particular or Mid City before we move on to the focus of tonight's meeting? All right. Uh, Laura Mellon is going to present from. Office of Homeland Security and Emergency Preparedness, uh, ready.noaa.gov, if you haven't been there yet, is a huge wealth of information. Um, and so please uh, go ahead, take away Laura, if you want to talk about storm season, and then we can talk about uh, COVID, potential COVID phase two, not dates, but just what that might look like. Sure, sounds great. Thanks so much, Chris, and thanks everybody for having me. Um, I'm sharing a link in the chat right now. This is our hurricane page. It's updated with all of the things I'm gonna talk about tonight about um, hurricane season with, when it's complicated by COVID-19. Um, we are eight days into hurricane season and we're just coming out of our first tropical storm. And this is really an indication of what the weather service and other um, uh, folks are saying that this is going to be most likely an above average season. Um, with Cristobal this weekend, honestly, we're really lucky. We uh, were facing some degree of uh, a flood risk with the rain that was predicted to come through with rain bands. And we sort of, we avoided a lot of those rain bands. They went to the north of us and to the south of us. And we're certainly thinking about our neighbors. Um, the weather service has just canceled the flood watch for Orleans Parish. The areas outside of the levee system are still under a coastal flood advisory, um, but that water has really come down. So we have also lifted the um, the voluntary evacuation order for those areas outside of levee protection. And as you know, we also lifted the parking restrictions so that people can park on neutral grounds and sidewalks. Those restrictions will go back into effect at 10 a.m. tomorrow. So please help get the word out to your neighbors that they need to move their vehicle for 10 a.m. Um, again, an indication of an active season, um, which is of course going to be complicated by COVID-19. So what I'm gonna talk about tonight is just sort of the general um, steps that you should take and that you should tell your community members to take to prepare for hurricane season along with what additional um, precautions you should consider during the, the ongoing COVID pandemic. Um, the first thing I always really like to plug is the importance of flood insurance. Um, 
most homeowners and renters policies don't cover flood damage, but flood insurance does. And you can insure your contents if you're a renter, you can insure your home if you're a homeowner. Um, and we've seen in the last uh, 20 years that flood insurance policies pay out seven times more than any sort of post-disaster programs administered through FEMA. So it's really, if we have any major damage this year, your flood insurance policy is what can help you make you whole again after a storm um, that we have a lot of really good information at ready.nola.gov slash rain where you can actually search your address and get a, a flood profile back on your property some basic suggestions for how you can lower your risk and um, links to all of the local organizations that are doing really awesome work on um, flood risk reduction so three main steps to hurricane preparedness. Um, one, stay connected to make a plan and three, gather supplies. Um, with stay connected, you want to make sure that you know what's going on during hurricane season. So you can sign up for emergency alerts with our office by texting your zip code to 888-777. Um, for those of you who got the Cristobal alerts this weekend, we also usually do a keyword um, for a named storm. Last year, you could text Barry to that number. We recycled all of those subscribers into the Cristobal number this year, and we actually have about 80,000 people who are getting our text messages about specific tropical events. So what you can expect us to do that um, in the future. And with those keywords, it's a little bit more than an emergency alert. If you just text your zip code, you're gonna get that emergency information, what you need to do to stay safe with the keyword like Cristobal, you're gonna get updates around trash collection and RTA service and things like that where it's not an emergency situation, but it's just basic updates about what's going on with the storm. Um, and then also with staying connected, you wanna make sure that you have um, everything, all of your emergency contacts available if you need to connect with people during an emergency. And just make sure that you're paying attention during hurricane season so that you don't get um, caught off guard. Uh, the second thing is to gather supplies. Um, really, in New Orleans, we're talking about two scenarios when we think about hurricane season. One is a low-level storm like what we saw last weekend for most of the people in the city, excluding folks who are outside levee protection. You're, it's a low-level storm. Most of us are just going to shelter in place. And so you want to have your supplies that you need to stay indoors, potentially without power, potentially without water, for three days. Um, and that includes food, water, medication, and anything else that you and your family might need to stay home. Um, with COVID, we're also in encouraging you to include face coverings, hand sanitizer, and disinfectants in your home kit so that you can continue to stay safe and prevent the spread if you're sheltering in place. And then with whatever post-storm um, recovery issues you might have to deal with. On the other hand, if it's a higher level storm and we're talking about evacuation, you wanna have a go bag ready. And in your go bag, you really need to make sure that you have all of the documents that you need to evacuate, documents that prove where you live, your birth and marriage certificates, and then uh, clothes and all of the other things that you would have in your home kit as well. Also important in your go bag to include those things I mentioned for COVID, face coverings, hand sanitizer, and disinfectants to help prevent the spread. Evacuation is really complicated in a pandemic and we really recognize that. Um, I just really want to reiterate what I think you've probably heard um, Director Arnold with my office say in the news over and over and that is that if we have a major hurricane this year the immediate threat from an, a major hurricane is more severe than the potential for virus exposure. So we know that there's gonna be a lot of concern with folks around evacuating and potentially exposing themselves. But um, if, if the city and if Mayor Kentrell has decided to call for mandatory evacuation, it is because they think that the, the impacts from uh, wind and water are so life-threatening that we absolutely have to leave. So please 
um, pay attention and heed any warnings that might be given. And there are ways that you can um, prevent the spread of COVID while you're evacuated. It's the same basic things that we've been telling you and that you all have been doing for the last three months, staying at least six feet away from others, wearing a face covering, disinfecting high touch surfaces often, and washing your hands or using hand sanitizer. There are no changes this year to the ContraFlow plan. So again, if there's a mandatory evacuation, the state police um, manage ContraFlow, meaning they reverse traffic in some directions on major highways so that every lane on a highway outside of the city is going away from the coast. That's to facilitate evacuation quickly. Um, no changes to those routes. Those routes are available on our website or on the state's TOTD website. Um, we think here in Orleans Parish that about 90% of our population is going to be able to evacuate during a major hurricane um, on their own. And um, that's, you know, the vast majority of residents here. But we do anticipate that an estimated 10% are not able to do that because of medical reasons or um, financial issues or access to transportation. And so for that reason, we have what's called the city assisted evacuation. I know you guys normally meet at uh, Warren Easton High School. That is one of 17 evacuation pickup points around town that are marked by that big statue that looks like a guy hailing a cab. Um, in a mandatory evacuation, if you do not have any other way to get out of town, you can go to one of those 17 pickup spots and the city RTA will pick you up, take you to the Smoothie King Center. And from there, we will triage you and you will be brought by either bus, plane or train to a safe shelter outside of the area. Um, when it's safe to return, the whole process works in reverse and you're brought back to Orleans Parish. For um, this year, because of COVID-19, um, we are ensuring that there are there's adequate PPE, uh, personal protective uh, equipment, and also social distancing at each of the evacuee spots and inside the Smoothie King Center to the greatest extent possible, recognizing that, of course, if we're evacuating, it is a life-threatening situation. So anyone who needs this service will be given an N95 mask, and I think that's really important. That is a medical-grade mask. Um, it's not the same as the, the cloth masks that we're using here. And we will um, encourage social distancing again to the greatest extent possible. If folks are not able to physically get to those evacuation pickup points because of a medical need or a mobility need or any other kind of special need, um, we have what's called the city's special needs registry. And through that program, we call you ahead of time. We understand what kind of issues you're facing and we figure out the transportation option that makes the most sense for you. So that might be being picked up at your home in a paratransit vehicle and then brought to a shelter just like everyone else, or you might need to go to was a medical special needs shelter. In any case, we need to know about you ahead of time. And so if you have anyone in your family or if this applies to you, please call 311 as soon as possible. Again, we want to we want to know about you before the storms so that we can help um, get a plan in place for your evacuation. So call 311 to sign up for the special needs registry. You can also sign up online at specialneeds.nola.gov and you can also sign up on behalf of a loved one, a family member or a neighbor. So please, that's a really important way that we can ensure that our most vulnerable residents have a plan in place to get to safety if we face the major hurricane. Um, I think the last thing I would say here, um, you guys are pros, you you know all about um, hurricane season and you're so great at always giving out information to your neighbors as well and we really appreciate that. Um, this year we are, um, because of the sort of the complications that COVID-19 have um, has brought to our evacuation planning, the city, uh, NOLA Ready and the Medical Reserve Corps have uh, taken on the work of organizing volunteers for city assisted evacuation. We've been partnered with Evacuteer, which is a nonprofit organization for the last decade, and they've really built an amazing volunteer program, volunteer plan for this specific uh, need for city assisted evacuation. And just because of the medical and the public health requirements that we have to consider this year, we've taken that in-house, um, really, but really building off of 
all of the great work that they've done in the past. And so um, if you were formerly associated with uh, Evacuteer, we would really encourage you to get in touch with us to join the Medical Reserve Corps and to continue to help with evacuation planning and volunteerism. Um, we had a training last week. We had 150 people join. It was a great training. We will do another one very soon. And we've got more information on that program on our website. So I think with that, I will open it up if anyone has any questions about hurricane season in general. Anyone on chat or uh, want to chime in with something? Um, can you tell me again, uh, so if you're going to be city-assisted evacuation, you will be provided with PPE as part of the onboarding process for transport? Is that what you did say? I'm sorry, I didn't quite hear that. Did you ask about PPE for city-assisted evacuation? Yeah, members who are being transported with city-assisted evacuation, they're going to be given PPE for that transport. Yeah, so, um, you know, usually when we're talking about masks, we're talking about these cloth masks where my mask protects you and your mask protects me. Um, for city-assisted evacuation, because we need to move the number of people that we need to move in the amount of time that we need to move them, we are really committed to making sure that they have the, the strongest PPE possible. So we are going to be issuing N95s. Those are the masks that medical professionals use where my mask protects me. Um, again, that doesn't replace social distancing in any way, but uh, that is something that we think is really important. So staff, volunteers, and evacuees would be issued N95s if we need to do a city-assisted evacuation. Great. Uh, well, I don't see any questions. Um, so I guess we could move, keep moving forward. Okay, and I think that you also were wanting just a brief update on um, phase two on COVID-19, is that right? Yes, um, I actually visited one of the, your mobile test sites uh, last week. Uh, it was a very useful experience, um, and a very easy, quick in and out. I went to the Lakeview uh, Rec Center off of Harrison and Marconi. Um, they definitely were always, they were very insistent and other members told us that they were looking for more people to show up. Um, the Medical Reserve Corps was also there working at that test site, so um, they, they seemed more than capable of conducting that kind of business and, and probably more than capable to help out with uh, city assisted evacuation. evacuation. Yeah, great. Um, thanks so much for bringing that up. The, I think that one of the really huge successes here in our response to COVID-19 is the ability to quickly stand up testing. Um, as you know, we were one of the first um, cities that were granted the pilot program with the federal, federally supported drive through testing sites. And what was clear after that program completed was that there were areas in the city that had not accessed the drive through program. And so the health department really quickly turned around and brought decided to bring testing to neighborhoods. So we are in different areas um, offering free testing in partnership with LCMC um, and Auctioner in different neighborhoods every day of the week. So you can find all of those locations um, on our website. I'll share it in the chat in just a minute. Um, so yeah, that's great. And really testing is I think one of the most important tools in our toolbox to really understand where we are as a city um, with the pandemic. But it is how we will be able to monitor and decide when to move in uh, forward or back in um, throughout the, the pandemic. That said, um, I would encourage all of you, there will be an announcement made tomorrow about phase two. Um, at, for Orleans Parish. As you know, last week, the state of Louisiana moved into phase two and Orleans stayed back. And that was really because the city wanted to see a little bit more data around key um, points in time. And we know that the virus has a, a time period before it, it's clearly spreading in the community. So the city needed that amount of time to really review the data. 
the data can continues to be consistent where new cases are declining. Um, and yeah, a lot of that, that timing is around Memorial Day and also the beginning of phase one. But we continue to, to see declining cases. Um, we've got the contact tracing in place that we need. And so we do feel confident about moving into phase two in what will be a somewhat more restrictive way than the state, but in many cases aligned with what the state is doing. So again, there will be more details about that tomorrow. And I see that Chris just shared the WBOK link. The mayor and her staff will be on WBOK live tomorrow at 3 p.m. Um, talking about phase two in Orleans Parish. So tune in then. We will also have a press conference that's following. There will be a lot more information about that moving forward. Fantastic. Uh, I know there's a lot of unknowns uh, because no official information has been released yet, but does anyone have any questions about response or um, phase two or any other information they could provide? All right. Well, thank you so much, Laura, for all the great information. Uh, we look forward to seeing what uh, phase two is going to look like. And uh, we continuously share uh, ready.nola.gov's information uh, any way in every, every way that we can, except for text messaging. They, they have the license to do that. So <laughs> uh, I appreciate the text alerts. I appreciate a uh, great amount of information. Um, also, remember to take your cars off the neutral ground before tomorrow morning, um, everyone. Um, Thanks, everyone. And I just want to say again, uh, MidCity is such an awesome organization. You guys, I know how much work you put into getting the word out to your neighbors, and we really, really appreciate that. So thanks again. Thank you. Greatly appreciate it. Um, not really an oh, by the way, but uh, there are some other other information, especially with um, with a lot of stuff in the news locally and nationally uh, about police community relations. Um, I didn't have this in the in the agenda, but I just wanted to send out a couple links if you people if you're not aware of kind of the official um, avenues to give feedback or to engage with community. Um, advisory to public safety officials in the city that would be our community police advisory boards uh, there's one for each district i'm going to include that information here in the chat um, we have we've, we've touched on this uh in our public safety meetings in particular but if you weren't aware of these these are completely um community driven boards that were part of a structure that came from the consent decree um, that were formed to have direct relations with the community um, and with other meetings and uh, NPD meetings kind of being at a, at a pause uh, you're, if you're looking for an avenue to contact or to maybe uh, elicit feedback um, you know mid-city is the first district and the third district of NOPD so those that information is on the link provided, uh, as well as the uh, Independent Police Monitor Office. Um, if you're not aware of that information, kind of what they do and the way they oversee uh, the NOPD in their in their ways. Um, also, there were a couple of other community meetings tonight, and one group that we or our organizational meetings tonight. Um, Orleans Parish Prison Reform Coalition uh, was having their monthly meeting basically at the same time. Um, we've, MCNO has worked with them in the past about jail expansion and uh, they wanted to make sure to um, engage their membership and community with their meeting this evening. If you wanted to know more about that, I included their link in the chat. Um, and also, this evening i couldn't find the actual event maybe it's here uh broadmoor uh improvement association um, 
fumble into this now. They were having a a a, uh, a forum this evening, uh, basically at the same time as this uh, forum on racial justice. Um, and maybe you can leave this meeting and and attend their online forum, or maybe uh, they'll be able to post after the fact. So, um, wanted to just give people resources um, locally. Uh, that that were already in place to engage with the community about these topics uh, of community and policing. So um, hopefully those, those resources are useful. And uh, if anybody else has any comments, um, I can have those resource links sent out in a follow-up email if anybody's interested. Um, again, if you want to get in touch with any of us on the board, it's info at mcno.org. And that's if nothing else anyone else even to say i'm going to stop recording and end the meeting hey chris hey steven hey this is steven uh if i may just take a few minutes to update um the association the organization on the mid-city uh group a project just very briefly sure. some details yeah the, the 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 contractors will be uh d doing some work in june and uh the june highlights uh, we'll be uh, working on base courses on South Dupree, Gravier, and Perdido. Uh, they'll do some uh, installing of wearing course. So some of these terms are technical, so they're always best to reach out to Sarah Porteous uh, for specific questions. But they'll be doing some wearing courses on Palmyra, South St. Patrick, South Solomon, Iberville, and North Solomon. And they'll be installing sidewalks, driveway, driveway aprons, and ADA compliant ramps on Cleveland Avenue. So throughout this month, th those are the ma main foci for their work. Um, please be mindful of no parking signs that might pop up from those contractors as they prepare for work, um, it, it, usually in the next 24 hours. Uh, so that's a signal uh, that uh, they're, they're coming. Um, and, the, and the last thing I wanted to just encourage MCNO, um, I, I want to affirm Laura's comments about the organization and and we 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 thank you not only on what you do uh, with hurricane preparedness and catch basins, um, but a number of topics. Uh, Y'all are engaged, informed, uh, and active, uh, and that's appreciated. Um, and um, many of us notice it. So thank you for that. And and now that I've complimented you, I want to ask you to to <laughs> exhibit that uh, uh, inclination towards action. And just to remind y'all that uh, we're in a census year and just want to encourage everyone to respond if you haven't. It's likely that each of, each one of you has uh, responded to uh, the census call, uh, but please try to keep it within all the things that we're dealing with. Um, uh, you know, please try to keep the census uh, top of mind to some extent, maybe in your top five, or your top 10, um, civic or social priorities, uh, and encourage others to to respond to um, the census. Uh, there are there are a few tracks that cover Mid City. Uh, track 50, track 71.01, track 64, and track 65. So there, are, give or take, there are about four tracks that cover uh, the association uh, boundaries. And right now, we're looking at a response rate. Uh, from mid city and those tracks in the 45 to 51 percent range, so um, and that's a little below the the parish wide average. Mm -hmm. So um, so everyone, the entire parish, you know, we need to do better. And you'll be seeing more of a push from from the city and the administration on this topic. But y'all are kind of get, getting an early, um, uh, 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 you know, advocacy from me. Uh, and you'll see some other sources of um, encouragement and, and advertising. So that's all I have. Thank you for having me. Thanks for the time. Great meeting. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Steve. You're welcome. Yeah, that's yes. uh, that's kind of a disappointing uh, turnout number <laughs> that you shared there. So I understand that the push is probably going to be probably going to start seeing it everywhere, especially coming from the city, especially with tomorrow's announcements about phase two. I imagine. Um, sure. I know the council people have also been trying to push it as well. So yeah. please, if you haven't, or if you know somebody who hasn't, please complete the census. Um, 
moving forward. Uh, not really, oh, by the ways, but there are some other things I did want to share uh, at links. Um, the deadline was originally today, but the pandemic electronic uh, benefit transfer uh, EBT car or EBT statuses were um, the deadline was extended to the 15th. So if you know anybody who uh, children who receive free or reduced meals at school, children who attend a school where every child receives free meals or children who receive free or reduced price meals on an individual basis. This is the program for families to sign up for assistance um, as a response to pandemic. Um, and then also it was included in the newsletter. Um, New Links NOLA, Regional Planning Commission, they're going to have their last uh, live um, webinar on the transit planning. Uh, I've included those links in the in the in the top in the newsletter. Please look uh, look at their plans, look at their proposals. There's three different options. They have videos on their Facebook page that explain a little more in person if it gets too in the weeds and too detaily. Um, and please uh, fill out their survey, which the link is also included in our uh, newsletter. So uh, that's everything from us. Uh, thank you so much. If you need still, again, if you need to get in touch with us about anything, it's info at mcno.org. Thank you so much, everyone. Thanks, Chris.